Today I'm going to be doing an overview and comparison between the Ender 3 S1 Plus and the Ender 3 S1. The main difference with the Ender 3 S1 Plus is its size. This machine is much larger than the Ender 3 S1. Here's the Ender 3 S1's build surface on top of the Ender 3 S1 Plus's. And as you can see, the Ender 3 S1 Plus has a much larger build area. So these printers both have the same great feature set that the Ender 3 S1 originally brought to market. They've got the Sprite hot end, which is a really high performance hot end that I've been able to get excellent prints out of. They've both got the filament runout detection sensor and all of the same user interface, except on the Ender 3 S1 Plus, it comes with a touch screen instead of this knob and dial type screen. So you've got a slightly improved user interface. Also, the Ender 3 S1 Plus has these red anodized aluminum bed leveling knobs compared to the Ender 3 S1. It's just got these regular plastic ones. I prefer the plastic ones because these red knobs add extra weight. That's kind of unnecessary. Sure, it looks a little bit cooler, but these are functional parts. You don't really need them to be all blingy like that. But aside from those two small differences, these machines are almost exactly identical. They've got the same list of features. They even use the same base plate. On the Ender 3 S1, you can see this base plate is the same width as this whole machine versus on the Ender 3 S1 Plus. These frame pieces stick out to the side a little bit. And there's one big downside to this that I kind of don't like. Um, if you bump these, it'll actually move this a little bit. So now it's clocked about a quarter of a degree over that way. And if I bump it back the other way, it'll kind of tip back, lean back the other way. So that could cause some print consistency problems where if you're bumping into your printers, it might come out of calibration. If you look at the regular Ender 3 S1, it's got this butt joint here where your um, tall extrusions are just flat against this bottom piece. So if it gets bumped, there's no shifting that can occur and it's always gonna be perpendicular to this bottom piece. This joint on the other hand can wobble a little bit back and forth and you can actually see me wobbling it right now. If you look at the top of the machine while I'm doing this, the bottom is perfectly stable against the table and the top can move back and forth. So this is really bad in terms of long-term repeatability. If this gets bumped at all, you're gonna have to redo your bed calibration. And you can tighten these screws down, but it's never gonna be tight enough to completely prevent this kind of motion from happening. So I'd consider that a structural deficiency. And the reason they did that is because they wanted to reuse this base piece. The base on the Ender 3 S1 is exactly the same as the base on the Ender 3 S1 Plus. So you can just take the drawer out here and plug it in over here. So as you can see, these are the exact same base of the machine. And that helps Creality save some money when they're manufacturing these because they're using common components. But you end up with a less optimal fastening choice here. So you end up with that little bit of wobble that can occur. It's not an issue when you're printing. I've printed plenty of stuff with this and it doesn't cause any problems. The only time it might present an issue is if you're moving this machine or kind of manhandling it a little bit. Taking a look underneath this machine, it looks exactly like my Ender 3 S1 did before I made this crazy modification to it to quiet down the motherboard and PSU fans. On both of these machines, I upgrade from the stock build surface, which is a polycarbonate flex steel sheet, to a textured PEI sheet, just because I have a lot better experience with those and parts just come off more easily. But yeah, I mean, the feature set is pretty much identical between these two machines. So if you're looking for an Ender 3 S1 with slightly bigger build area, then the Ender 3 S1 Plus would definitely be a good choice for you. I broke my original filament spool holder, so that's why this is missing it, and instead I'm using a couple of C clamps, which, you know, it works. Aside from that, I did have some issues with this machine initially. I got a really early version of this machine, so I think they were still having some issues with the firmware. And basically, I couldn't get my mesh bed leveling to work. I've talked to a couple of other people online that have had this issue. What solved it for me was actually completely replacing the main board. But a lot of people that I've talked to said just updating the firmware to the latest version solved it for them. So if you're having weird bed leveling issues, I would first try updating the firmware. And if that doesn't work, reach out to the person that you bought this printer from and ask for a replacement mainboard. I received this printer from Pergear and they were really good about helping me out with the troubleshooting and getting this printer working. So it turns out they're more than just a reseller of these printers. They actually know how they work and can give you some technical support if needed. 
All in all, I really like this machine. I've been able to get really good performance out of my Sprite hot ends. And if you're curious about this crazy fan duct and this weird configuration that I've got here, I've actually flipped the whole extruder assembly around so I have better visibility of the nozzle and I can see what's going on with the print more easily. I've already done a video about this thing, so if you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link to this video in the description below. And if you want to learn more about this MicroSwiss NG hot end, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you catch that video when it comes out. Neither of these mods would have been possible without my modder board, which is for sale on my website. This is basically just a board that takes the 24 pin connector that comes standard on most Ender 3s, this thing right here, and when you plug it in, it just breaks it out into a bunch of more useful connections so you can modify the hot end more easily. All right, thanks for watching this video. This is just a quick comparison between the Ender 3S1 and the Ender 3S1 Pro. So if you're trying to decide between these two machines, hopefully this makes your decision a little bit easier. I would say go with the Ender 3S1 Plus if you just want a normal printing experience. I think overall this has a slightly better construction with the way that joint is configured and it comes in at a lower price. So it's just a better value overall. But if you want to have a larger printer with the same features, I would go with the Ender 3S1 Plus. This one has a 300 by 300 size build area, which should give you a lot more options with printing larger objects or printing multiple objects in a batch. All right, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next episode.